Welcome to part two of supply stations and how they work. We're going to start talking about advanced designs. This video is going to be about the index filter. Uh, a couple of other things that I want to point out are there are some mods I'm using. One is text plates. You'll see that in a moment. Um, Magic lamp is going to show us the inner workings of the circuits uh, without having to mouse over everything all at the same time, so that's nice. And um, distributing power using editor extensions. That way I don't have to have power poles cluttering everything up. And uh, we're in the map editor, so I can control the game speed all the way down to one tick increments. Don't mind that cow. Um, so, the last thing we were talking about was the intermediate loaders. Uh, a couple of different versions of them. And now that we're talking about advanced loaders, we're going to start running into some additional problems. So, in my opinion, an advanced loader should be able to deal with multiple wagons. Um, most people are probably going to have supply trains with multiple wagons. So, what are the problems that we're going to run into there? Um, let's just talk about the error correction inserters. Right now, this station is using active error correction. Now, that becomes a real problem when you've got multiple wagons because you don't know which wagon has which errors on it. So, you have to send every inserter the same signals. So, in that scenario, if you have two wagons with different errors on them, only one of the error inserters can work at a given time. The other one will be waiting because they're both stuck with the same filter. Uh, if you try and work around this, you can run into other problems. If you wire them up a little bit differently, you might see them trying to remove the error items from each other's wagons. Uh, it becomes a bit of a mess. Uh, you can overcome it, but I'd rather just use a better loader. So we can eliminate that problem altogether by not making mistakes to begin with. So instead of having active error correction, let's just make these trash inserters. So when a train comes back with wood or um, some other item that's not in the loadout, these guys will just take it off. So that's all good. But the, the problem that we were running into with that idea is, well, if, I don't want to do that. If, the problem is, if we try and set a stack size, say from uh, each demand signal, oops, each demand signal that is greater than zero, and we try and set that as S as a stack size signal, well, all those signals are going to be turned into an S and then added together. And so we see the result here is 2.5 thousand S. Well, that's worthless. It's being clouded by all of the other signals. So we need to filter these demand signals somehow and then send them to the inserters. So we need this stuff here to create our demand signal and we need these combinators here to distribute the signals to the inserters. What we need is something between them. We need something that will take the demand signals, filter it in such a way that it is useful and then send it to the inserters. And that's why we're going to build on this intermediate loader. So let's just flip some of this stuff around uh, and we'll move it to where we would have it if we were using multiple wagons because we will be later. And so we'll just modify these wires a little bit here. So, okay, we've got our demand. We can manipulate the demand signals. Let's put an index filter in between. Now, this goes in between these, so that means that our demand will come down here, and our demand that has been filtered will come out right here. So we're also going to monitor some of these signals on these magic lamps that just appeared. We'll monitor the demand signals right here, so we can watch those, and we're going to watch how the filtering works on this combinator when we get to that. So okay, what is an index? What am I talking about when I say index? I am talking about an ordered list. So this combinator is our index, and it has all of the signals that we want to load onto the train with values that increment by one. It's just an ordered list of signals. And so we're going to move through this list of signals that correspond to what we want to put on the train. These are the actual values that we want to load, and we're going to take care of them one by one. So how do we move through the index? Well, I want to know if the current index position has demand because if the train came back and we don't need to put any more tarts on it, I want to skip over that one. So if we don't have any demand for a signal, there will be nothing coming out of these combinators. And that means that everything will equal zero. 
demand equals zero. So let's output C1. And we're going to send that C1 to this combinator right here, which will output to itself and count that C like the clock. So, so long as C is below 65, C will continue to output to itself whatever it is being input. So you can see on the right hand side, C is coming into this combinator and C is going back to its input and it's being added to the C signal from this combinator because there's still no demand. So we see C2 and then we will see C3, 4, 5. Now we can't move through the index that quickly, not tick by tick, because this circuit works by determining if there is anything demanded by that index position. So we need to slow this down and we're going to do that by dividing it by 5. So C divided by 5 is going to be our index position. And the reason why it's 5 is because that's just how many ticks it takes for the signal to get through the filter and determine if there is demand. And if there is demand, then we stop outputting C. If there is no demand, we'll just keep on counting. So all right, 5 divided by 5 is 1. So we output index position 1. Now this is where it gets a little bit weird, but stick with me. This decider will look at each index position and it will determine if any of them are equal to our I signal's value. So are any of these index signals equal to I1? And they are. Uranium ammo is equal to I1, the first position in the index. So this signal will not get forwarded. Each signal that does not equal I will be forwarded. And the reason we do that is because we're going to remove all of the extra signals. So we send on every signal but uranium ammo to right here, and we multiply it by negative 1 billion. We bring it very low. And so when it's low and you add it to the demand signal, it's just going to be a negative number. You're never going to have a demand signal over a billion. So these final two combinators are just listening for positive signals. Each greater than zero, I'll put each. This one gets a signal at the exact same time. Each of those greater than zero, turn it into an S for stack size. So next tick, this is the uranium ammo signal that was not forwarded. Therefore, it was not made into negative 1 billion. And if we just add across the columns here, there's only one signal that's going to be positive, uranium ammo. And we can see that right here. Output uranium ammo 1000. Output S 1000. And so we're going to send that on to the inserters. But we're also going to note that right here, we have demand. So we will stop the clock. We're not going to reset it, we're just going to stop giving it a signal to count. And it'll freeze right there on 9, which is great. One more tick, and the clock will be 10, which was divisible by 5 two times, which will bring us to the next index position. But we don't want that right now because we have demand. So we can advance a few ticks here. Tick. Tick, 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 tick. Nothing changes because we have demand. Awesome. Uh, also, the reason why we have 65 here is because it takes five ticks to move through each index item. And there's 12 of them. 12 times five ticks to move through each one is 60. And we don't have an index position until we hit five. So we just add five on the back, 65. So, okay, we've got our demand signal. We're dividing it by our 10 general inserters, just like we did before, just like the intermediate loader, just built on top of it. There's no remainder, so this inserter does nothing. And there's not going to be any errors to fix. So this guy's just going to sit here and do nothing. But let's watch it. Let's send this train on its way, and we'll watch these demand signals decline. And now this is where we can see the dynamic stack sizes. We only need 40 uranium ammo. And so we can see here, 40 uranium ammo and stack size 40. It's still going to the same place. Both signals get divided by the 10 general inserters. So we have stack size 40, uranium ammo 4. Sorry, stack size 4, uranium ammo 4. So if I take a look at this inserter, uranium ammo, stack size 4, just as we wanted perfect precision. And so 
we will put these 40 on the train. Demand is zero. We no longer need to load any more items of this type. So we're no longer outputting everything. Therefore, everything is equal to zero. There's no input on this combinator. Everything is equal to zero. Output C1. That advances the clock. We now see C10, which is divisible by five two times. Moves us to index position two, which is gun turret. So we will no longer bring the gun turret signal low, but uranium ammo will be brought low. And we are now going to start loading gun turrets. So we distribute that signal. There's our gun turret. And we will start loading. And we'll move on to the next, and the next, and the next. Item by item, perfectly loaded, no mistakes, maximum speed. Brilliant. So this is a very fast circuit. Uh, if you remember from part one, it took 955 ticks on the fastest version. Also here on the right hand side, you can see the index quickly moving between items as the demand is satisfied for each one. Um, so the fastest one that we had last time was 955 ticks. Now we're at a consistent 773 ticks. That's a pretty good improvement. The worst of the previous loaders was 2,218 ticks. So we've, we've come a long way since then. Okay, so this is not what a regular station is going to look like. We're going to take all of these combinators and we're going to move them up here, pack them in nice and tight, and that way we can have a block of combinators per wagon that shares a couple of combinators. So when we look at the next station, it's going to look a little bit different, but it's all the same stuff. These combinators are going to be in the exact, in the exact same place because they line up nicely. And then these combinators are just going to be packed in around them. But it's all the same stuff. You know how it works. So let's take a look at that. All right, here it is. Here's our block of combinators. Here's our inserter controls. These are our usual index filter combinators, just slightly reorganized. Keep the wires pretty. The only extra combinator is this one on each wagon. And this is listening to this red signal. So when red equals zero, that means there's no train here, right? Because this signal is only red while a train is inside this block, while a train is inside this station. So when there is no train, we're going to output everything. And the everything that we're talking about is the loadout for this wagon. And that will be sent to the inserter controls so that we can preload the boxes. So we can see right here we're outputting the number of items that each one of these chests should hold so that we can fully load a train. There's a, a weird quantity of some of the items in here because bots carry as much as bots carry, but we can fully load a train. Um, we'll be ready to go for the next one. So, okay, what else do we have going on here? Well, the loadout has moved. It's no longer over here because the loadout is unique to each wagon. So here's the loadout that we're familiar with. We've just loaded this in the other train. And here's the index right beside it. Can't miss it. Here's the other wagon with a different loadout and a different index. Okay, so another change that we were talking about was the trash inserters. You can see that there is a red wire that is shared between them, and that is because on this red wire, they're both seeing all of the signals that we want to load on the train, but they're negative. We're holding them low, all of them. And so as the train loads, you'll also notice that there's a green wire, let's zoom in a little bit, there's a green wire from these inserters that feeds along the power poles back to the station, and the green wire is not the output of this combinator. It's the input. So that green wire is going to carry the positive signals of what's on the train. So as the train is loaded with the loadout, these signals will cancel out. These signals will be canceled out by signals on the green wire. And nothing will happen. Only signals that are not brought low by this will be removed by those inserters because these inserters are only looking at positive signals. And the only way for a signal to be positive, since this station loads precisely, is if there's something on there that shouldn't be on the train. Um, 
something that else that may not be 100% clear is the negative train contents right here coming out on the red wire travels along the power poles and you can see these deciders have it coming in the back right this is actually just the same as it was before we have the negative train contents and the train loadout go into the back of these combinators it just looks a little bit different because we're using one combinator to spread the signal among multiple wagons so that's it it just looks a little bit different but it's doing things that we've already gone over there's nothing crazy different here we're just spreading it out so okay let's take a look at how that works will this work at the same pace as a single wagon train so we can see these signals are slowly disappearing we're moving through the index moving through the index trains done and it looks like we lost three ticks um, the reason why we've gotten a little bit slower here is one this is a single locomotive pulling two wagons instead of one two wagons weigh more than one wagon and uh, actually I think that's it yeah so this is about as fast as you can get so what are we do what are we using to achieve this well we have six deciders five arithmetics that's 11 combinators plus two deciders that's 13 combinators per wagon plus two shared ones at the front so that's not too bad um, it is actually the highest number of combinators out of the advanced designs per wagon that's the highest um, we'll take a look at some other designs we'll also note that there's a couple of downsides to this if you have a train that shows up with a bunch of signals that don't need to be filled a bunch of empty demand for um, the index it still has to tick through each of those positions so you might find that another design would be a little bit faster um, but we're not talking about a lot of extra speed this is a really good solution it just happens to use more combinators than some of the others it also requires that we change the index when we change the loadout and uh, it'd be a good idea to uh, change the clock too that way it uh, works as fast as possible also you might be wondering why we're not just using the T signal by reading a stopped train and the reason why is because it would make this whole thing run slower or we'd have to use extra combinators to manage the T signal uh, and the reason why I say that is because this signal will change before the train stops the index circuit will be engaged and ready to go before the train actually stops up until that point it's, it's just filling the boxes as required so it has a lot of time to fill the boxes but if we use the T signal the train has to stop at the station and we have to wait a couple of ticks for things to disable and then enable the index and we have to prevent the inserters from working while there's that transition so instead of doing that I just use this rail signal which coincidentally doesn't require any more combinators all right so that's it the next video will be on the max signal filter we will take a look at that um, it's a pretty interesting circuit you might find some other uses for that too uh, if you have any questions concerns or comments let me know and I'll see what I can do see you next time